You can infer without doing any more research what that candidate thinks about a number of issues that might be important to you. So these group labels can help you uh, make judgments about what candidates will, will do and, and care about and how they'll vote at a really minimal informational cost. Uh, on, the, on the other side of things... So what's another term for minimal informational cost? Right, heuristic or Q or signal, right? We cannot su successfully navigate life without constantly reading signals. And you are constantly emitting signals, all right? From, from a 12-step perspective, we're all constantly transmitting. Forget 12-step. We're all constantly transmitting. We're all constantly sending signals. I'm sending signals by the way I address, the way I speak, the, the topics that I choose, the sources that I cite, all right? Because there's, there are people who I, I most want to connect with, all right? The, the profession that dominates my friends, who are most important to me, is philosopher. So I most want to fit in with philosophers. And so that acts as an attraction that, that leads me in certain directions so that I'm sending cues and signals in that direction that uh, philosophy is important to me. Things groups can help people make sense of issues. Uh, so I referenced the idea of estate tax reform earlier. Um, if there were an estate tax reform proposal in Congress and someone wanted to learn whether to support or oppose that policy, they could find the bill text or they could find a summary that someone wrote of the bill text and they could figure out exactly what it was going to mean for people in their level of wealth. Um, but that again, is, is a lot of effort uh, that a lot of people are not willing to exert. But if they read a news article that says the Democrats are on this side and the Republicans are on this side, wealthy people are on this side and poorer people are on this side, most people are not going to need more information than that to understand how that proposal is going to affect their life. Um, so again, this is a real time-saving, uh, informational, uh, informationally useful uh, piece, uh, piece of strategy that people can use to make sense of politics. Right. To make sense of politics or to make sense of religion or to make sense of some cultural development or some development in your profession, you simply need to read cues from the people who are important to you. If you're a quarterback, all right, you're not paying equal attention to all 11 members of the defense before you call a play, all right? Most quarterbacks, they go to the line of scrimmage with two plays. There's, there's one that's drawn up, and then there's another one that they can audible into. And so on what basis do they audible into another play because they're reading cues they're looking at where the the mike linebacker is lined up or the the captain of the defense the the member of the defense who has a headset all right he's the one calling the defense so where is he lined up and how is he moving and and what do you think are his tendencies so an nfl quarterback will tend to dominantly like drill into with his, his perspective. He'll keep his eye on primarily one member of the defense. And that's how he will get a read for the type of play that he wants to call. And so we're all looking for those cues, those signals. And uh, the most important one is how will this place me with the people who are most important to me? If you have good relations with the people who are most important to you, you will have a blessed and happy and effective and likely prosperous life. Just to underscore this, I want to give what I think is a, a really useful example. Please don't try to read all of this. I'm going to tell you what it says. Uh, so I mentioned before that when people answer the same survey question a year or two apart, they often give really different answers. And part of the reason is that when you ask people about some general... And another part of the reason is that what incentive do people have who answer these kind of surveys to give it their best effort? Right? They have virtually no incentive to give it their best effort. So these these responses are likely going to be shoddy unless they are strongly incentivized to do their best. Well, policy like housing or the estate tax, they don't generally have clear ideas about what that means for their life, for the groups that they care about. Uh, like we saw before, it's generally this mix of different considerations. But once people know where the parties stand on these issues, they have a much clearer sense of people like me support this and people not like me support this. And so if you uh, look at the relationship between people's attitudes uh, in one year and, and a year or two. People like me. All right. Our groups are overwhelmingly going to be composed of people like me. Now, the social group that is most important to me is Orthodox Jews. And they are not terribly like me in some ways. All right. I, to the best of my knowledge, I don't have any Jewish ancestors. So it's not as though I'm just a 100% genetic determinist. Right. Without... Having any knowledge of any Jewish ancestors, I transitioned into Orthodox Judaism, and 
I'm happy there. That's my primary social circle. That's the group of people who are are most important to me as far as a coherent community. Wherever I go in the world, I can go to an Orthodox synagogue and I can feel at home. So it's not that uh, genes is just 100% the answer, right? Culture plays a role and we can assimilate into a different genetic pool if that is aligned with our personality and our preferences. Later. Uh, and you divide that up based on whether the people know where the parties stand or whether they don't. The people who know where the parties stand on the issue have a much stronger relationship between their attitudes at different times than the people who don't. And in fact, in some cases, the people who don't know where the parties stand, it's, it's just as good as a coin flip. So what's the optimal amount of uh, political knowledge that is necessary for your thriving in life? Like virtually none. Right? I study politics because I enjoy it. But for your average Joe, there aren't you know, rational, self-interested reasons why they should pay much attention to politics because they can have very little effect on politics and it's only going to get them upset. And if you have strong opinions on politics, right, you're very likely to fall out with other people. It's going to create problems for you in the workplace and in social settings. Uh, whether they give the same answer uh, in two years to the same question. So parties are really helping people understand what's going on uh, in a way that helps them form these more stable, more consistent attitudes that are going to be useful in, in making vote choices and holding elected officials accountable. So as you might be able to tell, I'm a little bit of a, of a pro-groups person. I, I think groups are really useful in helping people understand politics. Um, and I, I think part of the reason that it's important to me to say that is that groups can kind of get a bad rap. If you think about like teamsmanship or tribalism. Yeah, uh, groups get a bad rap in the highly individualist, highly liberal society like the United States of America and the Anglo world in general. But the world is run by groups, right? The world's not run on individualist strategies. The world generally speaking, accords victory to group strategies over individualist strategies. And what, uh, what receives rhetorical privilege frequently does not accord with reality, right? The world runs on hierarchy, not on democracy, even though democracy gets rhetorical privilege. Uh, individualism gets rhetorical privilege in the Anglo world, but the reality of life around you is that those who can fit in with the group going to be much more happy and effective. These are not generally good things. <laughs> People do not think of, of group-based reasoning as, as normative. Yeah, I grew up a Protestant, and being a, a tribalist was uh, looked down on, right? And even today, when I talk to Protestants and they're being open with me, they have a very negative view of uh, tribalism. But uh, being part of a tribe is a far more effective and happy way to go through life than being an isolated individual. Normatively good. And I think that's, that's a reasonable conclusion if people are blindly following a party that they've chosen for no particular reason, that was just assigned to them randomly, um, and therefore has no relationship with the things that they believe or care about. Uh, and sometimes it can feel like that's the way it works. People often inherit the partisanship of their parents. Um, here's a, a plot from, from Pew showing that you know, among Republican parents, 81% of their teenage children are Republicans. So maybe if you just got your partisanship straight from your parents and are following all of its policy prescriptions, um, it's a little bit silly to just follow your party's, your party's beliefs. But what research shows is that as people enter their 20s and 30s, uh, they tend to break out of these kind of inherited partisanship uh, and inherited religious affiliations. And they tend to choose groups to align with that more closely match their independent values and how they see the world. So a uh, great example of this is, is partisanship. You know, partisanship does not change very often for people in adulthood, but for people in their 20s, it changes actually fairly frequently. And even in adulthood, important enough things can make people change their partisanship. Um, for example, in the 1970s, abortion was not yet really an issue that was on uh, the national partisan stage. 